really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, this is Seriously Speaking, and as always, we always try to get to the bottom of certain issues or personalities. Today, I have a personality who is a senator in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, the question is, and we had to go to Abuja to have this done. As I said, Seriously Speaking is now very mobile. We can go anywhere in Nigeria. But I was concerned that in the last dispensation before this current house, of, I mean, for this current legislators, we had 21 female senators, but now there are only seven. In the same vein, we had 27 female members in the House of Representatives. Now there are only 14. What's happening in there? Well, I have the pleasure to introduce my guest today, who is Biodun Ulujimi. She's a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and she represents Ikiti South Senatorial District. She was elected in 2015 under the umbrella of the People's Democratic Party and is one of those female senators I mentioned earlier. But she holds a position of special assistant in the past, special assistant to the executive governor of Ekiti State and was deputy governor in 2007. Now, she comes from a very low background because her father is a photographer and her mother is a seamstress. She got her first job at 14 to pay her fees and has made it her life's work to fight for the lower class families. She's a broadcaster with spending time in NTA and a journalist. She's dealt with issues that range from basic health care to security and still continues to fight. Biodo is credited for her original thinking political courage, and relentless persistence in her drive to ensure that governance cascades to the grassroots. However, the beauty about what she does is she has the absolute support of her husband, and she'll tell us all about it in our conversation today on Seriously Speaking. Welcome to the show, Senator. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. Especially because you are also in the same constituency, <laughs> more or less, you know. Broadcast is your forte. Yeah. When you left in 1986, what did you go do? Well, I went into several things. I went into public relations. I, I went into private uh, business. And then I went into politics. But tell me, what was it that drove you to begin your political career? Well, for me, um, I never loved politics. And I was not a politician. But somewhere along the line, my husband got into the political fray and um, was assisting and was very, very visible in one of the parties. And it was time for the contest. And everyone said, no, we'll take your wife. We won't take you. And I thought that was out of place because I wasn't a politician. But they came and said, no, we want you. What contest? For the governorship uh, in... No, it was then House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. I was then living on the fringe in Lagos, between Lagos and Ogun State. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they needed uh, someone to contest to go to the House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone was saying he should go. But I said, no, uh, he wanted to. But everyone said, no. Everyone, they, they all came together and said, we'll take your wife. And... Whether you like it or not, that was how I got into politics. So that was your husband, magnanimously yeah. allowing you to go forward. Yes, and since then, he took a back seat. He said to me, if I allow you go, I will have no business there. Mm -hmm. And since then, he's taken a back seat. All he does now is to keep my constituency. He's the one at home. <laughs> That's <laughs> interesting. Now, this is Ekiti South. Yes. Is who you are representing and the people you are representing at the Senate. Yeah. But you were deputy governor, then you became governor for a time, so you are indeed your excellency. <laughs> I like that. Just an opportunity. That came. But I, I find your simplicity quite humbling. You know, there you were, welcoming you to, by yourself at your gate to let me in to your environment. I'm like, what? Even though you had become the senator, you'd become the governor for a bit, and there you are doing that. There's no big deal in all that we do. We're opportuned to be at certain places and this is at certain politics. times. You're not talking and politics. And it's not politics, me. no. And so you use the little time that you're there and you touch lives and move on. 
So I, I know that uh, many people who watch, who are watching right now, will look. Okay, this is one of those senators again. All they do is just go there and appropriate money and share money. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, what would you respond to who believe that politicians? Somebody tells me that politicians are not based on ideas. Politics is more about people. And it appears that's what's happening still in Nigeria today. That's not true. Um, it's tough work. Very tough. If it wasn't, everyone would be in it. Because all of us want to aspire mm -hmm. to at least do certain things. But you see, we have a fundamental problem. That is the That's fact... we in Nigeria. In Nigeria. The fact that all the political parties are not properly anchored. Even yours, the PDP? Yes. There is no particular ideology that we adhere to. If you look at all the political parties, you will find progressives and conservatives cohabiting. It doesn't happen that way elsewhere. You are either a progressive or you are a conservative. But in Nigeria, it's so fluid. That's why you find people move around easily. In Udo State, for instance, because there is an election, imagine the number of people that have moved just because the opportunities are not there for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that is also part of the reasons why people tend to believe that it's about me, about people, and not about ideas. The other issue is that there is no internal democracy in most of the parties. Most of the, most of the parties also have individuals who come with their own agenda and try to foist it on everyone. And whether you like it or not, people believe that at a particular stage in their lives, they should be able to speak for themselves. When you do not give them that opportunity, they're likely to say, what am I doing here? Let me move on. Mm -hmm. And that is what has put politicians in that uh, frame as it is. But beyond that, it's tough work. You've got to think about your constituency. You've got to think about all the people who are jobless. You've got to think about how to empower them. You've got to think about how to mobilize projects back to your constituency. You've got to go home on those very bad roads frequently to be able to be in touch with them, to listen to them, to do their bidding. And, of course, you must have the spending power. Oh. If you don't have it, you can get it. I, okay, I don't get what you mean by the spending power because people often say that uh, politicians tend to want to acquire money because the electorate demanded of them. 